Right. So Brian, Brian did set set portions of the Bible, and uh, uh, before before we let you go, uh, we I, I'd love to engage with you a little bit in a discussion of uh, issues that you raised uh, when you talked about Brian last year. You said that you never took his his uh, name uh, when you were married to him because Christine Israel sounded like a, a sort of a non sequitur. What, what did you say? A, a, oxymoron. An oxymoron, yeah, like Bronx opera, right? And that's I always kid 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 Harleen about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so uh, I mean, it's, you, you, you and Brian were courting and were married almost exactly the same time that Karen and I were, um, except uh, Brian left this earth just as Karen left our marriage, and she left this earth in 2005. Um, but uh, Karen and I were together for seven years before she decided she would become Jewish. And, uh, and and marry me, which was for me very important. Uh, this must have been something that you and Brian have talked about, but I don't know how important it was to him. It, I mean, as I, I said, to my knowledge, he attended, I believe, eight weeks of Hebrew school. He mastered the um, alphabet and figured he knew everything he needed to know and didn't want to go back. And and so he didn't. Um, and he, he jokingly said that that was his, you know, people would ask him if he was a, you know, practicing Jew. And he said, no, I've got it down. I don't need to practice. Um, <laughs> that sounds like Brian. Yes. <laughs> he was a very, very good reader. He didn't need to practice. That's absolutely true. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's it's an interesting thing. I think growing up where he did and when he grew up, there was cult, quote unquote cultural Judaism all around him. Parts of particularly his mother's family, you know, the children did make their bar and bas mitzvahs um, and were married. Um, the I mean, we decided very so soon on that um, we could have neither priest nor rabbi at our wedding. So we had a justice of the peace. My grandmother thought the justice of the peace was a rabbi. His grandmother thought the justice of the peace was a priest. So we could, you know, <laughs> consider it a man. Um, and, you know, he, he did. He, I, I, he was just above that. Um, you know, he often used, you know, Mozart's tag to the greater glory of God on his, on his music. He definitely knew odd and obscure facts um, in his piano quartet based upon a hymn tune. He knew that churches had sanctus spells, and it was very important because the premier was at the Skinny Atlas Festival, and he wanted to know the pitch of it. Unfortunately, by this time, his health was not so good, so I got to go there drag a landline as far as I could, hit it and say, my guess, it's a D. And he said, yeah, it's a D. <laughs> but that, but, but Bill, you know that because how did uh, Sokol warm up the choir? Ladies and gentlemen, give me a D. That's right, that's right. Always started with a D out of thin air. Out of D out of thin air. So D is one pitch I can identify, um, but, <laughs> Verification well, by oh, the way. There's, there's, there's perfect pitch and this absolute pitch, and I have close to perfect pitch, but not absolute pitch. Where to, obviously Brian did have yeah. absolute pitch. No, um, for that. The, you know, the, I, don't, I, I don't know. You know, because we didn't, you know, totally discuss that. You'd be, there was a, a bit of a hubbub when he died because, obviously, with the name of Brian Israel. Um, it was obvious to the bishop of the time that he might not indeed be a baptized Christian, but he had wanted his service to be done at Calvary where he had been organist and where I was a member. And um, so before we could proceed, the bishop had me go and talk to Ted Levy, who was the rabbi at Temple Concord. And Ted said, well, you know, he never, you know, I remember him from previews for the opera and that. But he never darkened my door. So he, he called up the priest and he called up the bishop and he said, he's yours. 
<laughs> oh my. <laughs> participated in the, um, he's obviously reformed. Yeah, he was a reformed. Reformed Jew. I, I, I used to have a debate with my grandmother who was conservative and say, when we would do things that she didn't approve of, we'd say, Grandma, we're reformed Jews. She said, no, you're deformed Jews. You know? <laughs> but, uh, now, you, Bill, you and Brian and Chris, or maybe just you and Chris, actually sang in uh, The Apotheosis of This Earth by Colonel Husa, is that right? Can, uh, Bill, Bill and then Chris, can you tell us about that? I, I was the accompanist and I went along uh, for moral support when they took it to Carnegie Hall and the Kennedy Center. Um, but uh, uh, Carl Hus and I uh, sort of hit it off and he, he enjoyed the way I played virtually the whole score with, with ten fingers uh, when accompanied <laughs> to Glee Club. He, he, uh, he took a, a liking to that. That's so great. they let me come along in the bus. And my recollection is that on at least one leg of that trip, Chris, I think you and I sat together. That's that's just a very big I think, I think record. That's, I mean, it, it, it was a typical Cornell type of trip where we left like on Friday morning and, you know, went to New York for a concert on Saturday and then went to Washington for a Sunday concert and then we're back in time for our classes on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> for that, I mean, I as a soprano and and one of the rehearsal sopranos that was used for that high b flat of beautiful earth <clears throat> lovely yeah so that that was what year 73 mm -hmm. four five somewhere in there i think it was probably 74 or 73 i can't yeah I it wasn't I think it would have to have been my senior year but a spring of 73 73 i think, Three. I think. Yeah, I think I, I was gone in seventy four. Brian, Brian and I stood side by side, I think with Chris Rouse, if I recall, mm -hmm. uh, playing the percussion at the first rehearsal of that. And um, I don't remember who played which instruments, but I remember Brian saying, "I get to go crazy on the whatever he was playing." Uh, and and, uh, and and then at the next rehearsal, he and Chris had been informed. I had not been informed, but so I showed up. Uh, uh, but uh, they had been informed that uh, Bill Uhas and, and some people from Ithaca College had been hired to do those percussion parts. We had been replaced unceremoniously and without notice. So I was kind of annoyed. But, um, you know, it, it's, it, he needed the professional people to play those percussion instruments, obviously. And even even Brian and Chris Rouse and I weren't, weren't up to his standard. I'm glad you were, Bill. <laughs> That's good. Uh, that, uh, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a crazy piece, I remember. And, and the... Um, uh, the, the the text uh, was was just spoken at one point. Uh, uh, yeah. This beautiful the very, earth. The very last line. This beautiful yeah. earth. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember, Chris, who who spoke that? It was Ellie Hobby. Do you remember Ellie Hobby? Ellen Hobby. Ellen she got Hobby to do spoke that. She got to speak that last line. Yes. Yeah. Well, Ellen Hobby was one of the first people I met at Cornell with you and Bill Casper. She sang Kunaganda in our right. in our Candide. I haven't seen her since. Uh, I don't know if you have. Oh yeah, she's here in town. Oh, that's great. I haven't seen her since since the pandemic, probably. But oh, she's yeah. Around. But she was very talented. Yeah. Yeah. So, Chris, thank you so much for all of this uh, enlightenment and uh, um, inspiration. I, I say that unreservedly. <laughs> I really mean it. Um, it re remembering Brian and 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 Karen and Ellen Hobby and and Cornell and. Uh, and um, Indiana, <laughs> and all the all these things is really amazing. Yeah, well, Dan was in Indiana too at the same time that we were there, although we didn't That's know right. each other at, until big maybe. school, big yeah. school, and the musical arts building was oh yeah it was a world to its own. But you you were, I I think I did know you slightly there, Chris, because you were in um, Ross Allen's class, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, I I, I remember Ross Allen. I. I well, actually, in '73, I went and auditioned there, and I, I played him some of, of um, Idiots First, which was still in progress. And he said, "Can I direct one of your operas?" <laughs> and, he said that. and then, you know, one of his students, uh, Ed Crafts, did. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but Ross was amazing. I, I still remember whenever we talk about um, the need for for uniform diction in an opera, and, and Tibor Cosma's uh, insistence on Marilyn Marshall. I remember uh, Ross Allen's uh, quip about that. He says. How about Papageno in Southern Indiana? <laughs>
I collect birds. <laughs> That's what I remember about, about Russ Allen. And also, he's talking about uh, Carol Neblett doing the the um, uh, the finale of Thais in the All Together. That's <laughs> the way he put it. And, and Beverly Sills was asked when we took Thais uh, uh, to, to Memphis on, in the Met tour, are you going to do what Carol Neblett did? And she said, what? At my age, you got to be kidding. <laughs> So these are all anecdotes that are connected, right? Um, so, so um, Bill, Dan, Chris, are there any other things you would you like to add about any of those places or about Brian that we can? Uh, obviously, this is a very long, wonderful interview. We're going to put it on the website, but uh, on the on the uh, uh, in the playlist. But we're not going to use it all in the concert. The concert will last an extra hour. <laughs> but we're, I'll well, edit it. I'm curious about Dan. question six. What's your uh, the Society for New Music used to give prizes in Brian's memory. Well, does. Um, so. And write them, and I think they start soliciting for works and compo for young composers, and they usually award it sometime in January. Up to the age of 30 or something like that? Or 35? Like the, 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 the dates keep shifting as young composers age out. 